Greetings guys, gals and non-binary pals and welcome back to another video. <laughs> I hope that you are doing well, I hope that you are fighting for what is right because there is a lot to be fighting for. As usual there will be a link in the description to lots of petitions, donations, emails to send to MPs, etc. Or you can go straight to thequeerkiwi.com slash support. Before I get into today's video, I just want to give a big thank you to our patrons, Amy, Emily, Iz, Eliza, Mimi, Jordan, Gina, Midge, Phoebe, and Roxy. Thank you all so, so much. You really help in enabling me to continue doing this. And if you want to become a patron and get a whole bunch of perks that come along with that, including bonus content, podcast a week early, and access to a private Instagram account. The link to that will be in the description. Thank you heaps. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Anything helps. So today's video is of course another herstory. And the woman I am talking about today is Hedy Lamarr. You may have heard of her before. She was a very big name in Hollywood in the 1940s and was known as one of the most beautiful women in Hollywood, in the world. She was known as one of the most beautiful women in the world. And I learnt of Hedy through a book that I read called The Only Woman in the Room. And it was such a good book. I can't remember who it's by. I'll have to check. I'll put it here. I didn't write it down. <laughs> it is an incredible book. But basically it was, it's a fiction book, but it's based on all the information we know about Hedy. And this is how I learned about her. And I've just been obsessed with her since then. I love her so much and everything that she's done. And she deserves so much recognition because she's genuinely changed the world as we know it. She's done so much and a large part of what she's known for is being beautiful. And I am here today to hopefully change that for you. I hope that you learn something and I hope that you share this video and make other people more aware of this amazing woman and everything she's done. There is a documentary about it called Bombshell the Hedy Lamarr story. I have watched it and a lot of what I'm talking about here comes from the documentary but I'm going to try to compress it so it's easier to process in case you don't have that much time. All right uh before I get started I realize I must be the only person on this website that forgets to ask people to subscribe so if you're here Please subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss more of these and other episodes. I post three times a week and I just love making content for you. I hope that you enjoy it. Yeah, okay, let's get into it. Hedy Lamarr, born Hedwig Kiesler on November 9th, 1914 in Vienna, Austria to two Jewish parents, a mother who is a concert pianist and a father who is a bank director with a big interest in technology. They had a decent amount of money, so Hedy grew up in this environment where they go to the opera and they do a lot of these like really lovely fancy things, like spending a lot of time at performing arts, things like operas and ballets, and her mother enrolled her in ballet and piano lessons when she was very young. And as I said, her dad had a big interest in technology, and so when she would go on walks with her dad, He'd like point out different things and tell her how they work, such as like how cars worked and all these these big things that he had interest in, he passed on to Hedy and sort of liked to talk about technology with her and teach her how the world works. And Hedy actually developed a big interest in technology and when she was five years old, she started deconstructing and reconstructing her music box because she was fascinated in the way that it worked. And that turned into something that she just loved doing was technology, figuring out how it works, taking it apart, putting it back together and just seeing the inner mechanisms of different things. She was also very, very close with her father. She loved him more than anything in the entire world and she held him very, very close to her heart throughout her entire life. As you can tell, Hedy was a very, very intelligent young woman and her favourite subject at school was chemistry. She loved chemistry and she loved science and using her brain and learning things. However, she was incredibly, incredibly beautiful. She was a beautiful, beautiful, glamorous woman. And that got in the way, especially at the time, you know, like women weren't scientists and people believe that had the times been different, had this have been today, she would have gone into science and not acting. However, this 
isn't now. This was back in the 1920s when no one took her seriously because she was beautiful. And that was what she was. She was her beauty and not her brain. Hedy went to Berlin to study acting and then was quickly picked up because of how beautiful she was. People wanted her in their movies. And she played a lot of minor roles in a lot of Austrian films. However, when her name was made, it was for her starring role in the movie Ecstasy. And the reason it was so groundbreaking and revolutionary and how it built a name for her was because it was the first ever time on screen it depicted a woman's orgasm. I believe it was the first on-screen sex scene too, although it wasn't a real sex scene. She was alone in this scene, but they edited it to make it look like there was another person there. Uh, and this had never been done before. It was very, very scandalous. It was condemned by the Pope and also by Hitler. Hedy also appeared naked in this film. To try and redeem herself, Hedy went on to do live performance and she portrayed the Queen of Austria in a production of Sissy. And it was here that she captured the attention of one Fritz Mandel. Now, Fritz Mandel was a very powerful, powerful man, not only in Austria, but in the world. He was incredibly wealthy. And this is because he was a manufacturer of arms. But not only a manufacturer of arms, like the lead top manufacturer of arms who provided weaponry to the Nazis. He, he was one of the four greatest dealers of arms in the world. And so literally the fate of everyone sat in his and these three other men's hands. And he was also Jewish. He was of Jewish descent. So... The man providing weapons to the Nazis and his wife were Jewish. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> they were married. <laughs> Fritz Mandel was 20 years older than Hedy. However, they got married because their family thought that it was the safest thing to do since she captured his attention and, you know, he was this big powerful man and they were a Jewish family, they thought that that was the best option and the best way to keep her safe. Also, beautiful. Okay, <laughs> enjoy the rest of the video. So at their house they had a lot of banquets where lots of very very important people would come, like political figures, just important people would come to these banquets. There's rumour that Hitler may have appeared at some of these parties, although it is doubted because these people were Jewish and Hitler can't be seen with Jews or having any association with them, obviously. Although there's no proof that Hitler was at any of these parties, Mussolini definitely attended these parties. He was at these banquets and having discussions and making war plans at these parties, at this Jewish man's house with his beautiful Jewish wife. I just... And because she was with Mandel, she was his arm candy. She was always at these banquets and things. All the men and all the women would always stop and stare at her because of how beautiful she was. And Mandel didn't like this. He was incredibly, incredibly jealous and very, very possessive uh, to the point where she wasn't allowed to like go anywhere or do anything. She was like trapped inside this house. My favorite thing though is that he was so jealous and there's this movie of his wife out there where she's naked and she has a simulated orgasm on screen and he didn't like this. You know what he did? He tried to buy every single copy. <laughs> But they just kept producing them. So the amount he buy, they just kept making them. And so after he spent about $280,000, he, he decided to give up because they just kept making them. Oh, it's really funny. Hedy's dad unfortunately passed away as tension started to build because he was getting very stressed and very nervous and it gave him a heart attack and he died, which really affected Hedy because he was the love of her life. She adored him so, so much. But this sort of reminded her of something her 
dad always said to her, which was be yourself and choose to take what you want. And Hetty obviously didn't want to be stuck with this man. She didn't want to be involved in this war and the destruction of her people and her home. And one of the things Hetty was allowed to do was she helped pick the staff, so the maids, because she had her own maid. And so when it came to picking a new maid, she chose someone who resembled her, her same sort of stature, hair, sort of as closely resembled her as possible. And then one evening, she invited her maid to have tea with her in her bedroom, and she put a sleeping powder in the maid's tea. And when she drank it, she obviously was like knocked out. Hetty stole her clothes, and she left the house, got on the maid's bicycle, and rode away. And from there, she managed to find her way to London. When she was in London, she watched a movie and she was like, I want to be there. I want to be in those movies. And it just so happened that the creator of those movies, Louis B. Mayer, was in London. He had come to Europe to help buy up actresses that were escaping Nazi Germany. So a lot of Jewish actors and he was going to take them back to Hollywood and make them into stars. <laughs> Because you didn't, you didn't have to pay them much, right? Like these women wanted to escape. And when Hedy approached him, he said, yeah, all right, I'll give you $125 a week. And Hedy just went, no, that's not good enough. And she walked off because that is the type of woman Hedy is. Powerful, powerful, demanding. She knows what she wants and what she deserves and is worth. After this encounter, she decided to get a ticket for the boat that he was on going back to Hollywood with all these actresses. And on this boat, she dressed up in her finest wear, like her designer clothes with these lovely jewels and just made herself look completely glamorous and drop dead beautiful, as beautiful as you could possibly look. And she walked into the dining hall where Maya was eating and the entire room just like stopped and stared at this beautiful woman, including him. And he was mesmerized by her and had to have her. And so he offered her $500 a week. Now remember at this time, this is like the 1930s. That is a lot of money. They had to sign these contracts where they weren't allowed to go out to parties and meet other people, but she didn't really care. So she went to a party <laughs> and here she met Charles Boyer who said, I want you to be in one of my movies. And she just said, I don't know English. I, I don't speak enough English. My English isn't good enough. And he told her that that was fine. And he would hold her hand through it, but please be in my movie. And she agreed. So then she was in his movie, Algiers. Algiers? Algiers. Anyway, that is the movie that made her name and made her famous. And after that, she was on the cover of all these movie magazines and she was everywhere. And she was just so beautiful and everyone wanted to be her. All the women wanted to be her and all the men wanted to have her. And women started parting their hair down the middle and darkening it so they could look just like her. <laughs> and uh, she was so beautiful even that Catwoman and Snow White were both modeled off of Hedy Lamarr. Around this time, John F. Kennedy actually asked out Hedy Lamarr. He was very taken by her and he asked her on a date and he said, this is before he became president, obviously, uh, and he said to her, what can I bring? What can I bring on our date? And he <laughs> her reply is iconic. She said, oranges. I like vitamin C. Oh, that is just beautiful. I love her so much. I genuinely, I always oh, love her. Hetty found herself in multiple marriages. Uh, her second husband, Jean Markey, was a screenwriter. and She was madly in love with him to the point where they even adopted a son together. However, he was cheating on her and was very unfaithful because all he saw her for was a beautiful face and just a beautiful person. He never cared to get to know her. And this was a common recurring theme throughout her life is that men had absolutely no interest in who she was as a person, just 
what she looked like. In the year 1940, Hetty was incredibly busy all the time. She was working on a ton of movies and all these women were overworked. They say like racehorses, where they were just every day working all day into the night and they even gave them like speed in the morning so they'd be awake and they'd be working and then they gave them sleeping pills so they'd get enough sleep. But Hetty, after all day on the set, like a grueling, long, long day from the early hours of the morning until late hours at night, she would go home and she would work on inventions because she loved inventing things. She even had her own inventions table. That was her passion. She absolutely adored it and she loved it so much. She even made the acquaintance of Howard Hughes, who was an airplane designer. And Howard Hughes gave her a bunch of equipment and he said to her, if you ever want to use any of my scientists, you can. Just ask them and they will do it. Now, at this time, airplanes had rectangular wings, not the like aerodynamic wings. <laughs> They had rectangle wings and Hetty saw this and she was like, these go slowly. And so she issued two books, a book on birds and a book on fish. And she took the fastest flying bird and the fastest flying fish and sort of combined them and took that to Howard and said, this, do this with your plane's wings, they will go faster. And Howard was just like, you are a genius. You are a genius. Hetty Lamar changed airplanes she got them to be faster i feel like no one really knows this we should be crediting her incredible incredible now at this time the war was really raging it was raging on a lot and german technology was way more advanced to british technology and there was a massive ship going from the UK to Canada that was torpedoed and hundreds of people died, including 83 children. Now this, this, this is just a side note, but that, that is really unsettling for me because my grandma was actually meant to be on that ship. They decided, her and her family decided like that morning not to get on it. But my God, so that like every time I see that or hear that, I'm like, oh my God, that's terrifying. <laughs> German technology was way better than British technology and Hetty didn't want to just sit back. She wanted to help. She wanted to do something and figure out what they could do. And she came up with the idea of a radio controlled torpedo where you could control the signal from like a boat and like divert the torpedo so it could like change its target you can change the torpedo's course but the problem with this idea is that the enemy if they were smart they could jam the signals so that you couldn't communicate between the two so she decided to come up with this way like a secret way to transmit and to send signals to this torpedo without being able to be jammed and this is when she came up with the concept of frequency hopping. And so that would be changing frequencies constantly and in sync. And you couldn't jam that because you could only jam one frequency at a time. So you'd only be able to jam it for a second. And so this was a revolutionary idea that could effectively change the course of the war. However, she didn't know how to put this together. She, she had the intelligence to be able to come up with these ideas, but she didn't know how to, how to make that a physical thing, how to, how to put that together. Hetty continued to work on this invention with a composer named George Antel, who she met at a party, who came up with the concept of synchronizing the torpedo to the ship. In a similar way, you would synchronize pianos with a piano roll and having them sort of use the same technology where they'd like roll and frequency between that on 88 different frequencies. They took this idea to the Inventors Council in DC and they thought that it was a great idea and they took it to the physicist at Caltech who specialized in electronics and they were issued a patent for this technology. When they went to the Navy and they told them their idea, the Navy just like threw it down and said, so you want us to put pianos in a torpedo which obviously isn't what they wanted but they didn't take it seriously and it was put away in a file uh, labeled top secret as everything taken to the navy was and the navy even said to hetty you'd be helping the war more little lady if you spent your time 
helping sell war bonds rather than sit around trying to invent torpedoes. Leave that to the experts. And so that's what she did. She carried on inventing in her own times because it's what she loved, but she traveled entertaining the troops and making money and she raised over 25 million dollars in war bonds which equates to 330 million dollars. Over this time Hetty was in lots of different movies for lots of different roles. She was in White Cargo which was sort of like a promiscuous film to entertain the troops because she was branded as a whore and those were like the only roles she was able to get and they were willing to give because she was in ecstasy and that's what she was branded as. She just didn't like it anymore, she didn't enjoy it, she felt so trapped and she felt like she was acting more in her real life than she was on the screen. She was so much more than everyone told her that she was and she decided she wanted to produce her own movies. And at this time actors didn't produce movies, let alone women, but Hetty knew what she wanted and she was going to do it. And so she started being producer in her own films, which is incredible. That had never really been done before. Like I said, it had never been done by a woman. And then she was remarried to someone who they say dulled her sparkle. He was a very boring man and she was such a bright, sparkly young person. And they had two children together and then he left and her kids never heard from him again. And she was a single mother and divorcee in the 40s, which again is very unheard of. That didn't really happen very much at the time. And she was struggling a lot financially, but then she got cast in this movie, Samson and Delilah, which was the second highest grossing film of the decade behind Gone with the Wind. Because of this, Hetty took inspiration from it and she wanted to create her own epic film. And so she started working on a movie called The Love of Three Queens, where she produced it and she starred in it. She played the three main characters in her own movie. And this movie was about the way love gets in the way of women in history and they're overlooked and they're sort of all just seen as love interests and not who they are. However, no one wanted to pick up this movie. She she said herself she she was a very good actress and she was very smart but she wasn't a very good business person. <laughs> so no one picked up the movie which is very unfortunate. She then went on to marry again her fifth husband Howard Lee and she went to Texas where she retired and then at some point they went to Aspen for a ski holiday and Hedy decided she wanted to build a ski lodge there and so she did called Villa Lamar and it was very successful. However, the relationship turned toxic. This man was an alcoholic and got into a car accident with her son, which was so tragic and she didn't handle it very well. And so she was meant to go to court to testify, but she sent her Hollywood body double to court, which the judge didn't like very much, obviously. So she lost everything in the divorce, including the ski lodge that made her really happy. And she was left with near nothing. She said that she was dead and that's how she felt. She felt dead uh, and around this time she became a patient of Dr. Feelgood who would give her vitamin B injections. They said it would give you energy but it turns out that that was meth. So she was being injected with meth being told that it was vitamins and she obviously became very hooked on this and her children said it turned her into a monster and she acted out irrationally and she was just really not good to be around. She lost herself so so much during this time and she just was so misunderstood and all she was to anyone was the way that she looked and that is all that she ever was and she was arrested shortly after this for shoplifting which she claims is a misunderstanding like she meant to pay for it and she forgot However, she ended up in jail, which lost her her last acting role that she had. And she became a punchline in Hollywood. They parodied her movies. They, they made fun of her. They mocked her. And as she started to age, people started saying she used to be so beautiful. Look how beautiful she used to be. What happened to her? She's ugly. She's worthless. Because her entire worth was based off of how beautiful she was. And she was aging. And... 
women aren't allowed to age, right? And so she started getting plastic surgery to try to keep her youth. And even in plastic surgery, she came up with these concepts that they hadn't done before. So like skin grafting, she was like, well, why don't you take skin from behind here? Can you do this? And telling them ways that they could do it. And it changed the way plastic surgery is to this day. She just kept getting these procedures to try to maintain her youth and her beauty. And eventually she just hid away from the world. She hid herself inside and she didn't go outside anymore. She didn't even talk to her children because she thought that even they expected her to be this young, beautiful person and that's all that she was. And she let that weigh very, very heavily on her because she knew that she was so much more than that and she never got recognized for anything that she did for, for the airplanes, for the signal hopping thing. And at this point, it was around the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis in the early 60s, and they started using her idea of signal hopping. They also used it in Vietnam, and they didn't ever really credit her. It wasn't until 1997 when people started recognizing her. She was very old at this point, in her late 80s. This technology that started as just sending signals and frequency hopping for military use turned into so much more. It developed into what we now have as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, satellite systems, as well as still being heavily used by the military and presidents in communicating. And it's now worth $30 billion. This patent, what she created was worth $30 billion. And you know how much money she got paid? Zero. She got no money from it. She just wasn't, she wasn't given anything for it until she got an award in 1997 for what she did and the achievement that she made. Although she still didn't get any money. <laughs> And she didn't want to go. Like I said, she hid herself away. She was very old at this point. She'd had a lot of plastic surgery. A lot of it had gone wrong and gone badly. And she was so insecure because she wasn't beautiful anymore. Not in the way that people wanted her to be. And so she didn't want to show herself. And so her son went to collect this award for her. And I just think it's all so sad because she was such a brilliant, brilliant mind. And she was known for being beautiful. And it drove her over the edge she worked so hard and she had such big ambitions and such big dreams and she achieved so much but no one took her seriously because she was just an actress and she was just a pretty face and they expected her to remain that way for her entire life and once she stopped being this beautiful perfect young girl they wanted nothing to do with her anymore there is only one interview one recorded interview with Hedy which was done in 1990 and it was recently recovered and they turned it into this documentary, which I told you I watched and it is incredible. And I'm gonna end this with the way the documentary ended. A quote from Hedy. If you do good, people will accuse you of a selfish alternative motive, but do good anyway. Give the world your best and you'll get kicked in the teeth for it, but give the world your best anyway. She revolutionized so much and so much of what we have today is because of her and what she did. We should all know her name. She is so overlooked and she overcame so much and she deserves to be recognized by everyone, by everyone. We should learn about her at school because she is an incredible woman and she could have changed the path of the war if they took her seriously. I hope that you learnt something today. I hope that you have this appreciation of the technology that we have. And I hope that you are thankful to Hedy and everything that she has done. Please share this video. I want more people to know who she is. The documentary is called Bombshell, the Hedy Lamar story. And then there is also the book that I read, which is fiction, but is based largely on her life, which is called The Other Woman in the Room. I'll leave a link to that book in the description as well. She is just incredible and she deserves recognition. And I hope that I was able to sum this up in a shorter amount of time than the documentary because I didn't go into everything. Obviously, she was, there was a lot, but I just wanted to share the important 
things and her sort of the roller coaster of her life and everything that she went through and the fact that she lived so many lives within her life I have such a huge appreciation of her and such a huge admiration of her she went through so much she achieved so much and she deserves so much more than she got so next time you're using wi-fi which is right now remember to thank hetty thank you for coming along i really enjoy doing these history videos and i hope that you enjoy them as well i think that they are super important and these women do deserve so much more recognition and i hope that i am able to inspire you with their stories i hope that you are able to take something away from it and have an appreciation of these women as well i will see you in a couple of days stay safe keep fighting I love you. Mwah. <laughs>